morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning to everyone on via Zoom as well. The Word was made flesh. Alleluia, alleluia. The Word was made flesh. Alleluia, alleluia. And dwelt among us. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The Word was made flesh. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Alleluia. God is the Lord. He has shined upon us. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is born. Let us glorify him. Alleluia. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people. you. Let us pray. <clears throat> o God, Father of all, in the fullness of time you sent your Son to be born of a woman as a subject to your holy law. Fill us with wonder at this great blessing you have bestowed, that we who are your children in Christ may be faithful to the spirit of adoption, which you have sent into our hearts through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The blessing of this reading becomes an integral part of the temple liturgy and reveals God's intentions toward those who are willing and obedient. A reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to Aaron and his sons saying, thus you shall bless the Israelites. You shall say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So they shall put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. We will read Psalm eight responsively, dividing at the asterisk. O Lord, our governor, our 
Out of the mouths of infants and children, your majesty is praised above heaven. You have set up a stronghold against your adversaries. To the enemy and be when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and stars you have set forces. What is man that you should be mindful of him? The son of man. You have made him but little lower than the angels. You adore him for glory and honor. You give him mastery over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen. Even the wild beasts of the field. The birds of the air, the fish of the sea. And whatsoever walks in the paths of the sea. O Lord, our governor. How exalted is your name. Paul writes that Jesus came to bring redemption so that we might be adopted as God's children. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Galatians. When the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father, so you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God, the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
I'd like to share a little bit with you from a, a homily written by Bishop Frank Loeb, who's the Bishop Episcopal Bishop of Georgia. Jesus is, quote, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb, unquote. Jesus is the name that is above every name. Jesus was a very common Hebrew name, both centuries before and long after Mary called her firstborn child by this name. Jesus is the same as the names Joshua, Hosea, and Isaiah, meaning God saves or God is salvation. In Hebrew thought, a name signifies the essence of someone. Yehoshua, God saves, was not merely what people called Mary and Joseph's child. Rather, God's salvation was to be the very meaning and purpose of his life. In all of the Old Testament, you may recall that God makes it very plain that no one is allowed to pronounce God's name. And that's because not only does it signify someone's essence, it also means that you have a certain authority and power over what you name. If you think back of you know, to the book of Genesis, when God gives Adam the right to name the various animals that exist and how God gives them the right to, you know, control this and that and the other thing, have dominion more than control. But nevertheless, those human beings had the right to name things because they had a certain control over them. And, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> so as a result, down through the ages, when people would have children and would name their children, whatever name they would put on them, their name may have signified something as far as God's plan went. But more often than not, it was a reminder of who was in charge over that child's life until that child got to the point where he or she would be on their own. So the parents would have responsibility, power, authority over the child that they named. And just to give a little more significance to the naming itself, Bishop Logue writes, we also find throughout scripture examples of God recognizing something more in the essence of someone than their name captures. God then gives the person a new name. God renamed Abram and Sarai. The name Abram meant exalted father, but God called him Abraham, meaning the father of nations. Sarai meant quarrelsome, but God called her Sarah, which means princess. God took Jacob, which means heel grabber, because remember he was the second born of the twins, and he's grabbing on to his brother Esau's heel as he's coming out of the mother, and named him Israel, meaning the one who struggles with God. Jesus will also call Simon, whose name means to hear or to listen, by the name of Kephas or Peter, both of which mean rock. Saul, who is the persecutor of the first followers of Jesus, will be given the Greek name Paul, as he is sent to bring the good news of God's salvation found in Jesus to the Gentiles, who would otherwise remain left out of the coming reign of God. So no human being can pronounce God's name because we cannot know the full essence of God. We also do not, as human beings, have control over God. 
God, however, knows our essence, knows us through and through, knows us better than we even know ourselves. And so in the moment when we were baptized with the name that our parents gave us and perhaps an additional one added to us as the water baptism was being poured on us and our name was being spoken, it wasn't just a ritual for naming that we were going through. Because not only was our name being given or pronounced in, the, in a, an assembly at that moment, but also that would be the name by which God would always know us, by which God would always call us. So our identity was tied up with that name before God and what God would expect of us. Some of us know what our names mean from whatever language they come. My name, Michael, for example, means who is like God. Now, that might not be always a great identifier for me because I probably am not much like God most of the time, but it's, a state, it's not a statement, it's a question. Who is like God? So any of our names may mean something particular. And it may signify how we ought to be living out our Christian life. But ultimately, in baptism, after we've been named, we all receive another name, another identity, which is Christian. And when we were baptized, we became living members of the body of Christ. We became identified partakers of Christ's nature, of the divine nature. We became brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ. We became children of God that allows us then to call God our Abba, our Daddy, our Father. So we take on this fuller identity beyond that which we would have just by being part of a human family. We become part of God's family. We become living members of Christ's body. Again, brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ, children of God, calling God Abba, Father, as the letter to the Galatians says to us today. And <clears throat> the other thing is that all of the blessings that God can give us are things that he wants to continue to pour out upon each of us who profess faith in his son, Jesus Christ, who claim him as our Abba and who he has called by baptism and by his grace to grow into the identity that we have by that name of Christian. And whatever, again, whatever our name might signify, how that will be an example of how we're going to live out that Christian identity by the example that we give, by our accepting of others, of how God has made them, how God has called them, and how God then asks us to see in them what he sees in us and to be grateful for what God has done for others as well as what God has done for us in Jesus Christ, making us these living members of his body, his family, his children, Jesus' siblings, by grace and by baptism. And <clears throat> the circumcision of Jesus that took place on the eighth day after his birth, is his way of again being identified as part of the holy people of God. Now, we know that medically, many of us were circumcised, the men were circumcised when we were born. But in, the, in Jewish belief, 
So in that time, it was a mark of identity. It wasn't just something medical. Even to this very day, when an Orthodox or a practicing Jew has a male child, they do the bris, where the circumcision is taken care of by the moil that's called in to do it. And the reason that that's done is not just, again, for a medical reason, but for the identity. Because as we read through the Old Testament, and we see that any time they wanted to know whether somebody was part of that Jewish group, part of the Hebrews, whatever, and they would strip the men. And if they would notice that they were circumcised, then they would know. It wouldn't, they wouldn't be able to lie their way through. And so it was a way that they would be identified as part of the people of God. And so for us, even though we've had in, you know, something done medically to us, it isn't the circumcision on our body that is the thing that, that is significant because all of us have been circumcised in heart by what God has done for us. Our hearts, in other words, belong to God. It doesn't mean, of course, that if they cracked open our chest and looked at our hearts, that there would be anything identifying us as belonging to God of being Christian by the looking at our physical heart. But it's the spiritual circumcision of heart that we, at the center of our being, which is what the heart signifies, at that very core of our being, we are God's and God is ours. We are Christ's and Christ is ours. And so our identity, our being named for Jesus as Christians, as the followers of the anointed one, which is what Christ ultimately means, is where our identity, our true identity is, be, is to be found, where our mission in life comes from, where we find our following of the Lord to be, how we are called to live out this life, live out this existence of ours in a purposeful, meaningful way by imitating the one for whom ultimately we are named, who has called us out of darkness into light, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing under heaven, who has given us yet another year in which to try to grow in his grace and grow in this identity and to become more truly the kind of people that we have been created and that he has called us to become people better able at living a gospel life of being people of love, of compassion, of mercy, of understanding, of forgiveness, to be light in the midst of the darkness of the world, to be people of love instead of people of judgment and hate, to be people who open our arms to embrace and to accept rather than to push people away, people willing to speak the truth and to take the risk of that truth, but at the same time doing it not out of judgment, but out of love, telling people the truth to welcome them into a fuller life in union with the one who has given all for us so that we could live now and forever in that loving embrace of the God who has called us and made us his own. Jesus came. Jesus will come again. And once again today, by God's own graciousness and by his blessing, Christ comes again to us through the truth of his word, particularly in that gospel that we heard through one another who believe and most particularly and especially 
in the gift of himself in Holy Communion, where Christ gives us himself, his body, his blood, to remind us again that we are part of his body as he, through that little bit of food, becomes a living part of ours. Invite you now to uh, stand to profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing in the good news of Christ's birth and dwelling in hope, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of creation. Blessed Jesus, we exalt your name in all the world. Bless your church, especially the Anglican Church of Mexico, its primate, bishops, faithful, and clergy. The congregations in the Aurora Deanery, especially Trinity Aurora, and our own, St. John the Evangelist, Nikaya Kuhn, Diocese of Southeast Mexico, in St. Matthew Cathedral in Rank, South Sudan. And inspire us by the Holy Spirit to confess you as Lord over all we are, all we do, and all we hope, and all you who hope to do. Lord, in your mercy. Blessed Jesus, we exalt your name in all the world. Bless all the people of the world, especially those in Nicaragua, Venezuela, Ukraine, Russia, the Middle East, China, North Korea, and all conflicted areas. May the whole world come to experience your peace. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Blessed Jesus, we exalt your name in all the world. Show all nations and leaders the way of the humble servant, guiding those in authority to use power for the benefit of all people. Bless our city and region and give us all renewed hope and purpose as we begin this new year. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Blessed Jesus, we exalt your name in all the world. You attend to the needs of your brothers and sisters. Hear the cry of those who call upon your name, especially those on our intercessory prayer list or those commended to our prayers or those whose names are inscribed in our intention books in today's bulletin. And those we may include now. For all those who are lacking adequate food or clothing or shelter for the satisfaction of their human needs as well as for their deliverance and protection. Send caregivers to provide help to all in need. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Blessed Jesus, we exalt your name in all the world. Bless those celebrating a birthday this week, especially Ginger Arndt, Marcus Baffis, Christy Williams, 
Look kindly on those celebrating an anniversary this week, especially Roger Votman and Barb Gavin and Father Mike's 21st year as rector. Accompany students returning to school and workers who rest from a busy holiday season. Protect those who travel and fill you with your love, people gathered here for worship. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Blessed Jesus, by your life, death, and resurrection, you gift us with eternal light. Grant to all our deceased loved ones, especially Celia Perry, Roger Leslie, Benedict the Sixteenth, Gary Strong, and all who have recently died because of the extremes of weather or through prejudice, persecution, violence, abuse, or neglect of others, and those whom we now pray. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We offer now the prayer for the mission of our parish found inside the front cover. Loving God, through your grace, guide us, the people of Calvary Episcopal Church, to joyfully carry out our mission of growing faith in your Son, Jesus Christ. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that we may develop a living faith that deepens our understanding of you and strengthens our awareness of the needs of others. May we be a transforming light within our parish and within the community. All this we ask in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us now confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Son of God, who at your birth became our brother, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Son of man, who through your human nature have experienced our weakness, Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. Only begotten, who in your risen flesh have bound us into one body, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please be seated. First of all, I want to wish all of you a very happy new year. Glad that you're all able to be here worshiping today. And that uh, I hope and pray that this year, especially for those who have uh, had a more difficult one, that you will be experience a happier year, a healthier year, and for all of us, a holier year in our growth in faith and love and hope in our Lord. Also, um, today, with the, uh, uh, because of the generosity of Phil Pryor, uh, there's a pancake breakfast offered uh, following the service today. So uh, as we go down the hall for uh, our coffee hour, uh, Phil will have made some pancakes for us and uh, it, they will, they are, I can attest that the batch after eight o'clock were great. Uh, so these will probably be even better. Uh, but anyway, just so that you all know that. Also, uh, we have the liturgical calendars for 2023. Those are on a, the cabinet across from the kitchen. Um, they are free of charge. We do ask if you wish to leave a donation to help defray the costs of those, but they're available to you. If you don't have it, just take the calendar. But also uh, we've been 
mentioning this and we haven't really followed through on it quite as well. Uh, and that is in the room next to the kitchen, meaning between the uh, religious education office and the kitchen, that room there that's just more or less a storage room now, there's a table there that has on it a number of new pictorial Calvary directories. And your particular directory is in there with your name on the cover on one of the steps of the church, since we have the, the red doors of the church in the stairwell as the front of that, your name is printed on there, your last name. So make sure you go in the off, into that room and find your calendar. They are more or less still in alphabetical order. And there may also still be some 2023 through 2024 calendars that are without your name, but are also for you. So those are in that room and we'd really encourage you to pick those up um, so that we don't end up having to uh, incur the extra expense of eventually mailing them to you. And then just as a reminder that at the end of this month, the last Sunday of this month, the 29th of January, we have our annual meeting, and this year we'll be having a spaghetti dinner as part of our observance of the annual meeting. Now, I don't know whether we'll be serving wine before or after the annual meeting. Uh, maybe we'll do it before so the business will be going more quickly afterwards. But nevertheless, and obviously lame attempt at humor there, um, you, we just uh, would like people to sign up so that we know uh, how many people are going to partake of that spaghetti dinner uh, for that day. That sign up sheet is on the bulletin board outside of the kitchen. Uh, also, uh, for those who are maybe considering uh, growing in your faith in a little different way, or for those who are um, may not be a part of the church or want to become more acquainted with our, the Christian faith, there is a program called Alpha, and we've talked about it before, but the citywide, Batavia Citywide Alpha program is beginning on Monday, the 23rd of January, and it will meet for, I think, 10 to 11 consecutive Mondays from 6.30 to 8.45 p.m. And that meets at the Batavia Park Civic Center on West Wilson Street. Uh, there, it is designed to be in person, but can also be uh, done virtually if you're more comfortable with that. And the link to more information uh, is in the bulletin today uh, on page 26. So I would commend that to you. Uh, and uh, want to thank everybody who contributed flowers in honor of or in memory of someone for Christmas. The, those names are listed on the uh, back of the bulletin today. And I want to thank especially all those from the Altar Guild who worked very hard at decorating the church for our Christmas uh, season. And uh, they are keeping up after the uh, poinsettias in particular, but also keeping everything else in order and uh, in readiness for all of the liturgical celebrations. So I wanna thank them for all of their hard work. I wanna thank Mark and also Chelsea uh, and Jessica Hermany uh, for their musical talents being given, especially for our celebration of Christmas, but uh, also again here today. <clears throat> Are there any other announcements via Zoom or
from people here in church. Hmm? Oh, yes, pledges. If you haven't given your pledge yet, uh, we would really like you to do that as soon as possible. If you haven't really thought about it, pray about it, and then uh, fill out the pledge card. You can pick up a pledge card outside the office. You can use a form that's available online or in the bulletin. And uh, we really encourage you to get that in as soon as possible so that before the annual meeting, we have the budget you know, better in hand. We've seen the preliminary, but we need to know how much we may be getting from pledges. Terry. Just wanted to remind everyone, Ginger Arndt was the person who spent about a year putting our uh, directory together. So please keep that in mind that today is her birthday. So um, thank you to Ginger. Also, and Dave, of course, Evans and helped with that also. Also, um, our women's group is meeting on the last Thursday of January. We're looking for ideas and it's going to be fun. It's been a growing program, 6.45 on Thursday, the 26th of January. We'll give you more details as it gets closer. Mr. Nice What'd you say? Mr. Nice I went to one of them. It was very nice. You went to one of them, you said? No, no, no. I think it was nice to see you. No, I can't. <laughs> okay, that's what I thought you said, but you said no. Michelle is giving two thumbs up for the women's meeting. So she said it was good. It was interesting. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Then I'd invite you to join me in the offertory prayer on page 13. God, the beginning and fulfillment of all that is good and true, let our delight in your gifts of grace bring forth from our hearts a song of thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift our hearts to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to redeem us from the burden of the law, Christ accepted circumcision as that law required. In this he affirmed the ordinance of old and fashioned our human nature anew. From his fullness we receive your grace, and in his name we gain our freedom, since by his incarnation he enfolds and enriches the poverty of our human nature. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. God, all creation rightly gives you praise. All life, all holiness comes from you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, whom you sent to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. Hear us, merciful God. Through Christ, accept our sacrifice of praise. And by the power of your word and Holy Spirit, sanctify this bread and wine that we who share in this holy sacrament may be partakers of Christ's body and blood who when his hour had come on the night before he went up to the cross to make full atonement for the sins of the whole world offering once for all his one sacrifice of himself took bread and gave you thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. In obedience to Christ's command, O God, we commemorate and celebrate his saving passion and death, his mighty resurrection and ascension into heaven, 
and we eagerly await his coming in glory. We thank you that by your grace alone you have accepted us in Christ, and here we offer you a spiritual sacrifice, holy and acceptable in your sight. Through Christ receive this our duty and service, and grant that we who eat and drink these holy gifts may by your Holy Spirit be one body in Christ and serve you in unity and peace. In your grace and mercy, bring us to the joy of your eternal kingdom with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Joseph, and all the company of the redeemed. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus, Lamb of God. Blessed Jesus, with the Christian faithful across the world, gathered at every altar of your church where your blessed body and blood are offered this day, I long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory, and particularly for the blessings given me. I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray you to come into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life until by your grace I come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Come, Lord Jesus, and dwell in my heart in the fullness of your strength. Be my wisdom and guide me in right pathways. Conform my life and actions to the image of your holiness and in the power of your gracious might. Rule over every hostile power that threatens or disturbs the growth of your kingdom, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Again, I remind you that if you want to receive communion uh, in the regular way, that you just would approach with both of your hands and I will say to you the body 
of Christ, the bread of heaven, you can answer amen. I'll place the host in your hand. If you want to receive from the chalice, then you can step over to where Dave is with the chalice and receive. Then if you want to receive just one of the little cups, the plastic cups, please approach and just put out one hand, just one hand, and I will then say the body and blood of Christ to you. If all you want is a blessing, then just come up like this, and I'll give you a blessing. Blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one day, Body and blood of Christ. Body and blood of Christ. Christ.
Let us pray. God of salvation, in this holy feast you call us into communion with Christ. Let us who bear his name extend that communion to all whom you are calling to be your children. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I want to uh, also thank uh, Bill Call, who throughout uh, the year, but particularly during these holy days, has lent us his trained and leading voice uh, in our services uh, that has helped us to uh, render even more glory and praise to God for the gift of his son, Jesus. And uh, <clears throat> just wanted to make sure that uh, we give credit where credit is due. And again, I want to thank my staff and for all of their work during this time. And uh, for those who may not be aware, uh, we have hired uh, a new person for the office who will be replacing Dave uh, when Dave retires on the 1st of February. So uh, life goes on, life continues to change. God is ever faithful and generous with his gifts. May God, the source and origin of all blessing, grant you grace, pour out his blessing in abundance, and keep you safe from harm throughout the year. Amen. May God give you integrity in the faith, endurance in hope, and perseverance in charity with holy patience to the end. Amen. May God order your days and your deeds in his peace, grant your prayers in this and every place, and lead you happily to eternal life. Amen. May Jesus Christ, whose name we bear, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with his joy and peace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen.
Christ is born. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you.